Hello, my dear friends. This is Rabbi Menachem Nissel. I'm here in Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, and I'm showing you a clip of an event that happened just a few years ago in a place called Moron. Moron is a mountain in northern Israel. And what you're seeing over here is a Hasidic rabbi. His name is the Boyana Rebbe, and he is coming to do something that seems so strange in front of thousands and thousands of people. This was the opening event of Lag Omer, a small Jewish festival that centers around Moron, because in Moron is buried a rabbi called Reb Shimon Bar Yochai. Reb Shimon Bar Yochai was a second century scholar He's buried in Moron, and this rabbi is about to light a bonfire, an adult man, and they're dancing and they're singing, and this dancing and singing will continue for 24 hours. Last year, 600,000 people came to celebrate. The music kept on going. There were people from every single part of the Jewish world came to this event. It was basically like a Sephardic Coachella or a ultra-Orthodox Haredi Woodstock. And it's based around bonfires. And it's all because a man died, but he didn't just die. The day that he died, he revealed the basics of a book called the Zohar. The Zohar, and you don't mess with the Zohar, is the foundation block of all of Jewish Kabbalah, of Jewish mysticism. That's what happened on the day of Lagba Omer. And this is what they're really celebrating with their bonfires. What is going on behind the scenes? Why is this so powerful and so intense? To understand this, we need to go back another thousand years to that holy moment when God gave the Torah to his beloved people, the Jewish people. And the Jerusalem Talmud describes that when that happened, it didn't just happen. It happened with something extraordinary, with something powerful. There's a description of Moshe Rabbeinu coming along and asking God for the Torah. And then God goes ahead and does the following. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to stop the sharing because I need you to focus on me. God gives the Torah to the Jewish people and says, grab onto it. And Moshe Rabbeinu grabs from the other side. And the Jerusalem Talmud discusses that there's a fight going on. Moshe is pulling it this way. God is pulling it that way. And then at the crucial moment, God says, okay, you win, and he lets go. So what you have is, is that the rabbis explain that what's happening over here is that this third, which Moshe Rabbeinu is grabbing onto, is that part of the Torah that everyone has. You just open up your local book and you can read it without any effort. This part that God is holding on to is the hidden light, the mystical light, symbolized by the Zohar, by Kabbalah, by all the deep, deep, deep secrets of the Jewish people. But in the middle, the third in the middle, that is the struggle of the Jewish people. That is the part where a Jew has to sweat over the study of Talmud and other classic Jewish texts. That is the part of Judaism where you have to work on your own personal ethics and how you treat other people and how you work on the purity of your mind. It is a struggle. And that's what Moshe Rabbeinu was struggling for. And when he achieved that climactic moment, when he got there, God lets go and says, now you can have the mystical part of Torah as a gift. My dear friends, Stop and think about what I just said. The journey from Pesach 
two Shavuos, the 49 steps of the Sphira, symbolizes the struggle of the Jewish people to get God's Torah. It's divided into three thirds. And that moment when you hit two thirds, that symbolizes that moment when you have won your struggle. And the last third is when the light comes out. In the Jewish calendar, two thirds through the Omer count is the 33rd day of the Omer, it's Lag Omer, the day when Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai dies, the day when the light was revealed of the Holy, Holy Zohar, the day when all of the struggles of the Jewish people to become close to God comes to an end and pure light, pure, pure light comes out. That is the depth of the bonfires that you're seeing being lit symbolizing that pure light that comes out after the struggles to get close to Hashem and to his Torah. My beloved friends, there's two messages over here, one negative, but one very positive. The negative message is stay away from quick fixes. Stay away from rabbis that say, let's learn Kabbalah, let's learn mysticism. It's nothing, it's fake. Without struggle, you cannot get to the light. But the positive message is that every single one of you, without exception, you put some effort, you work on becoming a better person, you study the text, you tell God in your prayers, I want this so badly. The flickers of light begin and become bigger and bigger and bigger. And you will have your own personal Lagba Omers on this awesome day that last year 600,000 people celebrated. This year, it's gonna be very small because of Corona. But the real Lagba Omer does not happen in Moran. The real Lagba Omer is gonna happen in your hearts. It's that desire to get close to Hashem. And then at that moment, He will reveal to you the secrets that He has in His Torah where you start to see the beauty, the true beauty of everything that is truly, truly beautiful in this world. That's the holy fire. And God willing, we should all be able to enjoy that beautiful fire together with the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days. All the best and a happy Lagba Omer to all of you.